So you got yourself a bike or you have your current bike and it needs some loving. Ooh. But today we're going to talk about frame detail loving. We're going to pick, let's say, this spot. You know, it fell over in the garage or a bike rack bit it or something of that nature. We're going to see if we can get this to look like, I don't know, like new after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. Taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Hey, welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin the guy. We're going to do a 10 minute tech tip today on detailing a frame. Why? Well, everybody has ever owned a bike ever has always had a flaw. It, some, something happens like it fall over in the garage or the bike rack bit it where actually the clamps on to, or you got a weird scuff. I just don't know where it came from. And me, uh, you know, I'm out bike race back in the nineties. And of course I was not that great. So my bike had a lot of tumbles. So from a mountain bike to a hybrid to a road bike, detailing your frame is something that you might want to do to bring that beautiful paint job back to life. And some of those paint jobs are marvelous. So we're going to take a little section here to make it all pretty. And the process that I've learned over the last couple of years of really detailing the frame is, you know, I've been doing this bike thing for a long time. I always like finding something new and dived into it. So let's dive into it after this. First, let's review. What I'm going to be using. Well, I have these Dremel little buffers, which I use these pads for. You don't have to use that. You can just use your elbow grease. But these are the definitely the compounds I definitely suggest getting from Adams Polishes. Um, there's a scratch and swirl, a compound, and a polishing. And then I get a couple fiber cloths, and I have three different pads that I use primarily. One is a wool blend, and this is the compound. And then I use the smaller one here for the polish. So that's what I'm going to be using. But also I do use a 3000 grit sandpaper, which I cut to this, the disc. That looks like this. Uh, what that does is help cut that first layer of uneven surface down to get this smooth. First of all, I want to clean the surface. But I use purple power diluted half and half with water. And with that, I actually clean the surface of the area that I'm working on to get any kind of grit and grime contaminants off. And sometimes by just cleaning it, really gets it out of that surface area and so forth. So with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, you can do a second cleaning. What that'll do is remove any kind of maybe paint or anything that may have rubbed into the actual surface area and that will give you a completely dry area to work off of without any other contaminants. The first step in this section here, I'm gonna use that 3000 grit sandpaper, but I'm just using, well, it's kind of a cloth paper. Actually, I put a little too much on there, just enough. And kind of, what I'm doing is just smoothing this out. So it takes off those ridges, just a little bit, light and polite. Now we're gonna apply the scratch and swirl. To this area. What that does is really kind of treats those swirl areas and has a little bit of a grit to it. It cleans it up. And we do a little bit of wipe down and see what we're looking at here. I think you start seeing it shine coming out. Then, we add a little bit of the compound, start a little dot in the center and work its way out, and apply the same area.
take a look. It's trying to get that shine to come out. Granted, I'm not going to be able to get these chips out, but at least it's going to look a lot smoother and less atrocious. Then we do a little pad here, a little bit of a polish. Then we apply it. Once that's applied, then we pretty much have our end result. So you can see a high shine in that area that we cleaned up. That big old scratch mark, the clear coat has now been buffed down and clear. I mean, yeah, you'll still see it, but it's gonna be less noticeable. And actually with that polish is gonna protect whatever undercoats that you have there left as well. So that's your little tester spot. And again, when you do any of this type stuff, I would test it underneath because paint jobs are different on each bike. So if you do it underneath um, an area or underneath a down tube, um, that way you'll be able to do that test area and know how that paint's gonna respond. Looks simple, right? <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this quite a while on bike frames now. And you know, I just started off just initially just doing like armor all and a little bit of ball, uh, uh, car polish, like turtle, that kind of thing. And then uh, over the time, I've found different layers that I can manipulate that paint, right? And some paints are thicker than others and some clear coats are thicker than others as well. So take note, you want to do a test probably underneath of that process, just like I did in the small sample area, just to kind of see how that paint is going to perform. Um, you know, d different paints are thinner. You may not have very much material to work with. And in that case, I'd only would use like the compound and then just a polish on that. Um, and again, all these can be done by just, you know, elbow and not using the actual polish, you know, polishing tools. But that, for me, since I do it a lot of it and I do the whole frame, something that kind of really cuts down a lot of time for me to do that. Yeah, you hear the choo-choo in the background. Anyway, um, <laughs> Here we go. So that's my little section there. And what I do is I do one of those stages through the whole frame at a time. And what that does for me is able to inspect the frame as well to make sure it's not damaged or any of that nature. In addition to making sure all those little spots are addressed at a particular time. I have had like noticed in the sun like, oh shoot, I missed this and just kind of repeat that process in that small area. So this is great for mountain bikes, road bikes, hybrids, that kind of thing. Even your car, because most of this is car products. Um, my wife's like, we got those scratch on the back of the car. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> so I'm right out there, you know, buffing it out and made it, made it go away. Um, yeah, I use mostly Adams polishes, but you can use your own that you prefer. But Adams seems to do really well. And they also have a YouTube channel too. Check out their stuff. And I uh, have all sorts of crazy stuff that I haven't dived into yet for treating windshields and all that. So anywho. Hope you got some knowledge of cleaning up the frame and making it look beautiful and protecting it. Bike products out there right now, if you go to a bike shop, they probably have a degreaser and a polish. And that's it. They don't have any of this detailing like you would on a car. And granted, this paint is pretty much just car paint in a sense, maybe a little bit thicker. So you actually get those uh, frames back to life in more in detail. But check out the final result after I get through this whole bike. It should be beautiful in the sun. It has a deep little glitter. Glitter. Everybody loves glitter, right? Maybe. Check it out. So we have the frame out here in the sun. You can see some little, you know, scratches and dirty spots like this here. And this is original. I wanted to show this like a before and after in a sense of that spot test. So you got dirt here. But when you look on the actual this portion right where I did it, you can kind of see that brings out the high level of glitter. And yeah, you see the chips, but that scarring from the clear coat is pretty much eliminated. So it's you know, less noticeable per se. You know, this uh, scratch here goes to the actual frame metal underneath, but you can see what it did look like is similar to this here. So that's what you can do to get, really get those 
frames to pop and come back to life. So I will proceed to finish this frame up and make it look all nice and shiny as much as possible and get all those little devil out scuffs as you will. So, well, thanks for joining me from the garage. And until next time, have a wonderful day.